So I want to talk about grazing and snacking, the two deadly health destroyers. But what's the difference between grazing and snacking? They're very similar. With snacking, you have maybe a certain time you're going to snack, like between lunch and dinner, or you're going to snack before you go to bed. So with grazing, you can pretty much, there's no limit on how much, what you eat, or when you eat. You're just constantly eating. And you can see this at like some social activity where they have uh, food around the house, and maybe you're going to the nuts and you're eating this, and it's, people are bringing food, and you just keep grazing and grazing and grazing. If anyone ever gives you the advice that you should snack to prevent overeating, realize that is the worst advice you can ever give anyone. Well, let's just talk about some of the trouble that someone can get into when they start grazing and snacking. So they start eating, the blood sugars go up, regardless of what they eat. The insulin then goes up after that to push the blood sugar down. Now they end up with lower blood sugar. Now they're hungry. So what you have to realize is that eating causes hunger about one and a half hours later, especially if you're consuming carbohydrates. Then take a snack, blood sugars go up, insulin goes up to push the blood sugars down. Now we have low blood sugars. It's time to eat again. And this goes on and on and on. Problem is, once this becomes chronic, now the person starts developing a higher and higher insulin level and then insulin resistance and all the symptoms that go with it. They have to get up several times a night to urinate, tired after eating, craving all the time, especially for sweets. You have belly fat, your blood sugar goes up, your vision starts to go, you have brain fog, you start getting inflammation, and the list goes on and on and on. Some people also eat when they're depressed, okay? The problem is they might feel better temporarily, but then they become more depressed because as soon as you start raising insulin, insulin has a side effect of causing a lowered emotion, depression. Some people eat to get energy. The problem is the more you do that, the more tired you're going to be because one of the side effects of high insulin is fatigue. Some people eat when they're bored or stressed. The problem is the more they do this, the more they actually increase cortisol and the more stressed out they will be. And then the very temporary pleasure that someone gets from eating carbs creates a spike in dopamine and then they start developing dopamine resistance. And then some people eat carbs for pleasure. They spike the dopamine, which gives them that nice sensation, which lasts for maybe like 30 seconds and then it goes away. So they need more. And the more they do that, the more they develop dopamine resistance, and then they need more and more carbohydrate to achieve that effect to the point now where it doesn't work anymore. The more carbs they eat, not only are they no longer getting pleasure from that, they're getting pain and inflammation. And of course, some people eat just because the food is there. It doesn't have to be a reason. So you can see this is definitely a trap. I think there's a lot of people don't realize that when they do fasting and do it correctly, what can happen is you can put your body in a condition where there is absolutely no more hunger and no more craving. In fact, you'll feel like you just had a meal because you're eating your fat. You're eating your fat all day long. And eating your fat generates ketones and it's a clean fuel You'll feel good. You won't have any of this roller coaster over here. You'll have improved cognitive function, focus, memory, and you will also have an enhanced mood. You won't have that anxiety or depression. You'll feel uplifted. If you're new to fasting, this can be achieved if you do it correctly. Number one, and most importantly, do not eat breakfast. I was the guy who told people to eat a breakfast. The problem is that I was missing some data. And the data was this. When you eat anything, it doesn't matter what you eat, if it's protein or fat, and especially carbs, you will stimulate insulin to some degree. The insulin will then drop the blood sugars and it causes more hunger, okay? So all night long, you're sleeping, you're not eating, so you're fasting, and then you wake up and you eat, and then you start the cycle over again. If you didn't eat consistently, what's going to happen 
is you'll be able to tap into your fat fuel and run on that. Versus if you eat, you won't. When you eat and you stimulate insulin, you're going to inhibit or block your ability to burn fat. And I think a lot of people don't understand that one point. So at the very minimum, do not eat a breakfast. Many people are not hungry, yet they still eat a breakfast. That's a big mistake. If you are hungry for breakfast, all that means is the day before you ate too many carbs. What you want to do is you want to avoid carbs when you eat, which is going to then make it easier to do fasting versus consuming a carbohydrate with a meal and trying to do fasting. Because of this, carbohydrates trigger insulin, which then makes you hungry, and eating stimulates insulin, which then makes you hungry. Both of those actions. Number two, eating causes hunger about one and a half hours after you eat. Number three, this is for people that are addicted to grazing and snacking. You must not buy any more junk food. Get the junk out of the trunk. Because if it's available, you're going to eat it. You just don't bring it in the house. You're going to have to talk to your family and get them not to buy it as well. Make it difficult to get and just make it so it's not available. Number four, stay as active as you possibly can. Do a lot of exercise. Get out of the house. Do other things. And number five, I already talked about this. Avoid carbs when you eat. If you haven't seen my video on the technique to avoid eating bread, you might want to check that out. I put it up right here.